Hello and welcome to another wintry day here with me, Abby Barnes. Today we're going to be reviewing this tent, which is the Wild Country Zephros One by Terra Nova. It's a, a one-man tent, ideal for three-season backpacking or lightweight adventure race, racing. Um, and it's really renowned for having five-star reviews and basically living up to everything the elements can throw at it. But I've been experimenting with this tent for a few weeks now and I found a few faults that are kind of me being picky but they wouldn't lead me to give it a five star review, I'd probably give it about three and a half to four. Um, but if we just run through the features of this tent then we can get it up and look at those pros and cons of this tent and lead you to make your own kind of conclusion about whether or not this is the right tent for you. So just before I actually get the stuff out of this tent, I'll just give you some quick figures. This tent weighs just over one and a half kilograms. I think it's 1.57 or something like that. Um, the pack size is down to 52 centimeters in length and something like 14, 16 centimeters in um, width, diameter, whatever that is. Uh, so it's not as light as tents get, but it's not really very heavy either. And it is really a lightweight um, one man tent. So it is lightweight, it is good for that. Um, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to look at this tent. I also got, got it because it's green. Um, I find that's quite good to blend into the environment, especially with what it is I do in my kind of field of work. Um, I also bought this tent because the inner and outer pitch together, and that's just quite handy. It speeds things up quite quickly. And it's a really, really competitive retail price. It retails at 120. You can easily get this for 90, 99 pounds or something like that um, online now. It's dropping <laughs> quite quickly in price. Um, so grab it while you can if this is your kind of tent. But let's get the stuff out and have a look now. So we just got a little um, waterproof zip pocket here with the instruction manual in. And I really like that, it's good because you can reuse that packet as, as much as you want for anything you need to keep watertight. We've then got in this uh, kind of tough durable fabric, um, 8.5 millimeter Superflex alloy poles. So this is a single loop um, tent design or a tunnel design, um, basically meaning it's kind of really resistant to strong winds and whatever the elements can throw at it. I tend to favour this kind of style of tent um, just because I just think they're really great and as I said they really live up to what the elements can throw at it. So that's blue and nice and flexy. <laughs> and these two poles here, I think these are super flex alloy, alloy poles as well. Um, they're basically, they sit either end of the tent so you'll see those when we put the tent up in a minute. We've then also got somewhere in here, there it is, another bag. And in here we have 10 aluminium V-shaped pegs which are a really nice um, red. They've got www.wildcountry.co.uk on, so a bit of advertising there. Uh, some people favour these pegs, others really dislike them. I quite like them, I think they're strong. Um, I don't really tend to find they bend, but some people do. But you've got 10 of those. And a little um, hole repair kit there. All right, so the tent itself, as you can see, the actual outer bag has a little handle which is useful for carrying and getting stuff out easily. So this is all nicely wrapped up. Um, two little pieces of spring. Very grand. So what have we got? Right. So this is supposed to have a five minute pitching time. It's probably going to take me longer than that because the inner and outer are separate at the moment, so putting up the inner takes slightly longer. But if we actually look at the fabric, so both the ground sheet and the fly sheet are made of PU polyester. The fly sheet has a 4000 millimeter hydrostatic head and the ground sheet has a 6000 millimeter hydrostatic head. Now hydrostatic head, for those of you that don't know what that means, um, basically it's, say you take this piece of fabric, um, the amount of water you can apply to that fabric for one minute before it starts to soak through. So looking at the fly sheet again, 4,000 millimeter hydrostatic head means you can apply 4,000 millimeters of water for one minute at one certain point on this fabric before it starts to leak through. Now 4,000 millimeters isn't as good as it gets, 5,000 is kind of standard, um, so I'm quite disappointed that that is 4,000, but 6,000 is pretty good for a ground sheet, so no problems there. Right, so as you can see, this is a black ground sheet, white inner, so that's quite livens, livens things up a bit. And a nice dark green outer. So 
I think now the best thing to do is to get this tent up and then we'll run through the features, the pros and the cons and once as, as I said earlier just to make you or leave you to make your own conclusions about whether or not you think this is a good tent. So if we just get the timer out. Right so pitching the inner and the outer together should take about five minutes uh, according to the instructions anyway but since I'm pitching the inner and the outer separately I'm saying this should take me about seven to eight minutes but let's set the timer and find out. That's three, two, one. Go. Pop that down there. Right. So the easiest way to put up this the style of tent is quite simply thread the pole through the uh, kind of sleeve thing on the outside of the fly sheet. Then peg out one end, which is trickier than <laughs> it looks. Peg out the other end. That's easy enough. Then pull it tight. Then you've got to get the mini poles and put them either end. That can be a bit fiddly in cold conditions because the sleeve they sit in isn't always that tight. Uh, and then once you've finally got those up, just peg out the guy lines to pull everything tight and that's your outer up. Right, that's the outer put up. So far it's taken me four and a half minutes. Let's get the inner up. So putting up the inner is a bit more complicated than putting up the outer. You start by pegging the centre of the inner to the centre of the outer, just with little clip things. Uh, they're a bit fiddly in cold conditions but not too bad. Then each of the corners of the inner has elastic string and all you do is take those pieces of elastic string, stretch them and put them on each pegging point on the outer tent. So that's really nice and easy and I really do like that kind of um, putting up style. Then finally each end has a clip and all you do is take those clips, clip it to the outer tent and that's it, that's your tent up. Okay, so that's that done. Took us eight and a half minutes to pitch the inner and outer separately but they're together now. So uh, I'll just paint back the door and we'll have a look at some of the features. Right, so this is the tent, as you can see. It's fully put together now, fully up even. Um, you've got one, two, three, four guy, guy line points. So they are 2.3 millimeters thick. So really not very thick, but that's trying to keep the weight down. Uh, and there should be four reflective points. The little toggle things there are all glow in the dark, which is good. And then you've got reflective points, such as these ones here. Uh, basically, just so you can find your tent in the dark, they are quite handy, because your head torch kind of reflects on them. But if you want me to point out instantly the first thing that's a pain in the neck with this tent, it's the door. So if you take a look here, it doesn't roll back, but instead it just kind of pins up to the inner, which is a real pain. Because <laughs> um, as soon as it rains, if you open your door, in the morning after it's rained and uh, it just kind of like runs down here into the tent which is really annoying <laughs> um, also whilst we're on the inside of the tent take a look at that door so it rolls down to the bottom uh, so as you're moving in and out it gets muddy uh, from boots it gets snagged by moving in and out and of course it's white um, now white's a really great cheery color if you have a look inside Ugh. It's all white, but it's just impractical because um, things get dirty and I think that's just annoying. <laughs> uh, if you take a look here, you've got a massive porch space. I haven't got this pulled anywhere near as tight as it could be. If you take a look at the base, the uh, inner is attached to the outer with a big elastic string which just attaches it pegs with the pegging points. So that's really nifty, it's really quick and I do like that a lot. Um, and then at the base, or excuse me, even the top, um, Oh, let's see if we can get you a shot of this. It just pins like a normal tent does, really. Um, just with little peg things. So if we go back inside again, it's really quite spacious. It's not worth complaining about. Um, so I think five foot six, six foot is probably as big as you can be um, to like stretch out properly in this tent. I don't find it that spacious. Uh, but whilst we're inside, another con of this tent is there's no pockets. I don't think it would add much weight to add pockets. They're really practical and I love pockets and it's annoying that they haven't got them. Uh, so that's one disadvantage that I just do not like about this tent. What else is there? As I said, I'm just being really picky. So for me, the number one thing is the door. You can see here, so you just open the door in the morning and you peg it back there and it suddenly goes, you just get soaking wet and I just think that's really annoying. Uh, some people roll it back and use a a peg, like a clothes peg to tie it back, which is fine, I guess that would work, but I don't think you should be having to make modifications to a tent that costs 100 quid. 
I think it should just do what you need it to do. <laughs> so another con of this tent is there's no bathtub design, which basically means the sides of the tent, um, or the ground sheet, just comes up the side by a couple of inches. That doesn't exist in this tent, which is silly. I thought that was a standard thing with all tents. Um, and what that means is basically, <laughs> if there's any surface water on the ground, uh, it's going to get into your tent because it's just going to leak. This is all mesh. And if you take a look at the mesh at the end there, so they've got a good ventilation system here. They really have tried hard. Um, but if I... Yeah, we can go back outside in a sec. I'll show you the mesh door. It's half mesh. The top half is mesh, which is great for ventilation. But if you do want to shut that up to kind of maximise the heat retention of the inner tent, then you can't. <laughs> so it's great for airflow, but it, you know, it doesn't maximise the heat retention that you can get in this tent. But I'll get outside, zip this up, and show you what it looks like. Alrighty, so here's the door. As you can see, half mesh. Well, you can't really see, but that there is mesh. Uh, there's no way to roll anything up over that, so the heat gets out <laughs> and the cold gets in. And you can see still, this door is just getting in the way. It really cheeses me off, actually. Um, and you can see there, the little bit there, snags on the zip for the inner. I just think the door's a pain. I think that's a complete malfunction. I can live without pockets, but the door's just annoying. Um, but otherwise, that's it. And it is a good tent. So I'm just being really picky. But you've got to be picky when you're paying money for something that needs to stand up for the job. Loads of people have said this is a five-star tent. It will stand harsh conditions, which yes, it does. So if that's what you're looking for, that's fine. But just adding pockets on the inner, uh, a door that ties back, mesh on the door, and a bathtub design would make this thing a whole load more comfortable and a lot more practical. So uh, I'm surprised people haven't really picked up on that. But this is the Wild Country Zephyrus 1 by Terra Nova. A very good tent if it's what you're looking for. If not, keep your eye out. I'm sure there's something else that ticks those boxes. Thanks for watching.